The Golden Ritual Spear Here is a weapon, part spear and part staff, caught in the vortex that is Dark Souls 3's lore. As described in the English localization, it is a ritual spear presented to Dark Moon Knights before Sullivan claimed the title of Pontiff. From this wording alone, one could assume that the Dark Moons pass the spear down from night to night. And yet, a more literal translation of the original Japanese script reveals a possible new meaning. It is a staff spear said to have been donated to the Dark Moon Knights before Sullivan had become Pontiff. The word donated could imply that an entity outside of the Dark Moons gave them such a weapon. What's even more curious is that there are two copies of this spear. One version is tucked away in a corner of the Pontiff's Church, guarded by a secret mimic and within the reach of Sullivan himself. The other is held by Gwendolyn, the Dark Moon deity Gwyn's alleged last born, and one of the Age of Fire's last legitimate gods who is found being consumed by Aldrich. Now, while the Golden Ritual Spear bears a striking resemblance to the original Tin Darkmoon Catalyst from Dark Souls 1, Gwendolyn's original Staff Spear, its crooked and uneven appearance gives off the impression that whoever created this spear couldn't match the finesse and symmetry of what had come before. Or perhaps, in keeping with the themes of Dark Souls 3, Recreating the glory of the past was entirely out of the question. Regardless, the inner workings and politics of An Orlando and Irithil are tales best left for another time. The lore surrounding this particular spear, the characters, the drama, is perhaps the most unique part of it. But unfortunately for you, you don't want to use the Golden Ritual Spear.
the Golden Ritual Spear. Here is a weapon, part staff and part spear, caught in the vortex that is From Software's balancing. You might see a neat looking weapon, a cool off-meta option that could spice up your gameplay, but unfortunately for you, uh, wait, has this been done before? Nah, forget it. From Software did not do this weapon any justice. In fact, it's not difficult to say that any weapon that was Gwendolyn related was done any favors in these games. No one even remembers the Dark Moon Longbow, man! Considering the spear is tucked away in a corner that is quite skippable, I would assume most folks would miss it entirely. And if you did get your hands on it, you would probably miss the time when you hadn't. The Golden Ritual Spear is the shortest spear in the game. About as short, if not shorter, than the Follower's Javelin. And that is short. This spear even has the audacity to be a staff that casts sorceries, while only scaling off faith. This doesn't mean that you won't need any intelligence in your build, no, 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 no. You need the base int requirements for the sorceries that you want to cast, and then those sorceries only do as much damage as how much faith you have. Huh? This is just a normal sorcerer, but with extra steps. What is stopping you from choosing something like the Heisel Pick or the Immolation Tinder over this spear? What do you gain from having this kind of stat spread on your build? Well, unironically, you get a pretty fun playstyle. If the previous four minute self-indulgent montage didn't show enough, then let me come out and say that it's got some redeeming qualities here and there. Considering that this weapon is part staff and part spear, you'd have to gauge its overall effectiveness compared to its counterparts. First, as a catalyst, you'd have to look at its spell buff, aka this is how effective your spells will be. There's a whole calculation behind the spell buff number, but all you need to know is that the higher the number is, the more damage your spells will do. So, at the soft cap of 60 faith, the Golden Ritual Spear gets 220 spell buff. This beats the Cleric's Candlestick and the Heisel Pick at their soft cap of 60 intelligence. The Spear then ties with the Immolation Tinder. However, the Spear has a trick up its sleeve, the weapon art known as Steady Chant. Steady Chant increases the Golden Ritual Spear's damage, both with its spells and with its melee damage, by 10% for about 15 or 16 seconds. But believe me, that 10% is noticeable and helps out. This weapon art is something that the Immolation Tinder is sorely lacking. Never mind that the Immolation Tinder's weapon art, while relatively cool, is definitely niche. Steady Chant, however, is never niche. 99 times out of 100, you're gonna want more damage with your spells and with your melee. And casting Steady Chant is pretty cheap anyway. Keep that buff up as long as you can. Now, rest assured, most of the dedicated sorcery staves will beat the Golden Ritual Spear simply because they have a higher spell buff multiplier or due to the fact that the Sage's Crystal Staff has a special steady chant that increases its damage by 30%. Caster mains out there will already know that, but bear in mind the Golden Ritual Spear isn't a dedicated casting tool. It's a weapon too. And on paper, the Golden Ritual Spear is the best sorcery weapon hybrid for dealing spell damage. But now, the question is, how good is the spear's melee? And if we're being brutally technical here, there is nothing salvageable for using the Golden Ritual Spear simply by itself. Having access to a spear moveset is a rather unique advantage, but due to its incredibly low reach, you will find that you will miss your targets entirely more often than not especially if you just go for spear pokes and all that. Not to mention, spears can only target a single opponent at a time. There's no crowd control, you have no range, and the damage you deal is 
Well, actually, the damage you deal with this spear is pretty all right, especially if you have the steady chant going. So how can we solve this issue with the Golden Ritual Spears moveset? One word. Or is it two words mashed together? Flash sword. That's right, Farron Flash Sword. See, that's two words! This is the first step in fleshing out the Golden Ritual Spear. By comparison to the original moveset, the Flash Sword, while similarly short, makes up for its range with speed. Its running R1s come out quick and provide a great diagonal slash that covers areas where the spear pokes cannot. It's perfect for chase downs and for keeping pressure. If you do land a running R1, be it from the spear or the flash sword, it would behoove you not to just start throwing out the flash sword out with near reckless abandon. Note, try to angle your R1s off to the sides of your target, which can be pulled off by simply unlocking. This way, your chances of getting surprise parried remain low, and the only reward that the panic parrier gets is more flash sword in their gut. What's more, another great move is the Flash Sword's Rolling R1. This attack comes out pretty dang fast as well, and it has the ability to catch opponents off guard if they're busy hounding you. Most folks aren't aware of the Flash Sword's hit stun, which can lead them to getting comboed into more Flash Sword R1s. The Flash Sword Neutral R1, by the way, is cheap both in stamina and FP cost. You're gonna have plenty of swings to spare, and folks who assume you don't are in for a big surprise. But wait, there's a third player in this threesome, Soul Greatsword. What can I not say about Soul Greatsword? It's got range, it's got impressive horizontal coverage. If you choose your angles well, you can narrowly space out the greatsword and hit multiple folks with it too. It feels immensely satisfying to hit somebody or a group of enemies when done just right. And if you have steady chant going, this spell is gonna hurt. Not to mention that the spell is also unparryable. It can go through walls. It's just a neat spell all around. Now, it's not the fastest spell by any means, but with the sage's ring on, you can predict and catch rolls with it, racking up damage all over the shop. If the opponent is close enough, you can combo a Soul Greatsword into your spear or your flash sword as well. And now you have what I deem to be the two fundamental spells that will make or break your time using the Golden Ritual Spear. I mean, you won't be using the Golden Ritual Spear, right? Not because the weapon isn't inherently bad, but because I told you so. It's in the thumbnail, in the title of this video. You are not going to use the Golden Ritual Spear. Right? Right. But hypothetically speaking, if you were to somehow pick this weapon up and maybe swing it around a little bit, then these two spells are absolutely needed. From there, the rest of your spell arsenal comes down to personal taste. All I can advise you to consider is to have synergy with your spells. If you're fighting folks who in large number will have Tears of Denial, maybe it might be a good idea to bring Great Ferrandart. What about bringing a ranged option? Consider something like Great Heavy Soul Arrow, which doesn't take too long to cast, especially with Sage's Ring, and can give a good punch from a distance as well. What about Area of Denial? At that point, you might want to bring something like Snap Freeze. Whatever you do want to bring with you, do consider the base int requirement for the spell. You have to keep it low in order to keep faith high and the rest of your stats relatively healthy. One big warning I have to give you though, be mindful of your lock on whenever there's a co-invader to your side. Locking on and locking off can be a bit finicky and may result in you dropping some spaghetti and it spilling over to your co-invader. When in doubt, wait for your red friend to get clear before making any big spell plays. Because if you hit a friend too many times, if they don't already die, they might turn around and beat your ass instead. You have been warned. Now here's some numbers. The Golden Ritual Spear build I ended up using at the meta dueling level of 125 looked something like this. 
60 faith, 23 intelligence, and 24 attunement to have four spell slots. This is what I consider to be the bare minimum in order to get the golden ritual spear working. And to prove that point, I even got this build working at 40 levels lower at SL81. It works, believe me. If you push this build beyond 125, consider grabbing more attunement slots for more options and variety. That's in my opinion though. When you have 60 faith, that means you can technically get Tears of Denial for free. How you pull this off is that you equip the Dark Moon Ring. This is what you get after giving 10 ears to Yorshka in her Dark Moon Covenant. Once you put on the ring, you equip Tears of Denial in the very last two of your spell arsenal arrangement. Then when you invade or you get into a co-op session, you cast it first thing. Then unquip the ring for a damage ring instead or what have you. And then there you go. You have the rest of your spells and tears for free. Whew, really had to sweat for that extra edge just to die a few minutes later. Oh well, we get what we can when we're using the Golden Ritual Spear. I mean, when we're not using it, that's what I meant, yeah. And yes, the low endurance in this build is quite the tall order. But I promise you, having low endurance is all about having patience, proper stamina management, and a hidden success stat that increases whenever you hit like and subscribe on my videos. But now, let's actually take a step back a bit. There are actually a considerable number of ways you can make a build surrounding the Golden Ritual Sphere. What I'm showing off today is rather sorcery focused, but you can take things in a largely different direction. Since the Golden Ritual Spear is already asking you to divert points between intelligence and faith, it would seem appropriate if you brought dark sorceries and lightning miracles to the party as well. What if you comboed a lightning stake into a roll-catching old moonlight? Or what about dark edge even? Well, you'd be as crazy as this nerd, Lapista. What if you made a glass cannon build all around poking people with the spear Ooh, itself? Then you wouldn't be crazy. You'd probably just Goodbye. be ye tomato. So this weapon is okay. It's not terrible. If y'all really want someone to blame about this though, blame Scott Jund. He started this years ago and I will never forgive him for that. Neither should you. You know who you should forgive though? Professor Rachel. She did the beginning voiceover for this video. It was great, it was marvelous, I love it. If you're curious to read up on more lore insights into the Soul series, particularly dealing with the official translations of the games, because, you know, going from Japanese to English, some things got lost in translation, consider looking up lowkeysouls.com. I love the works of all these five creators and the stuff that they put out, and who knows? You might too. Speaking of you, though, I'm sure I got the creative juices flowing somewhere, somehow. Maybe a few of you might even want to try, I mean, discard the Golden Ritual Spear before Elden Ring begins. I wouldn't blame you. There's something new on the horizon, and we're less than two weeks away. But between now and then, some of us are maybe thinking of giving Dark Souls 3 or some of the other games one final send, uh... Uh... Son of a bitch!